I know um, this is the kind of first time you've you've publicly spoken about this. Um, but before we even go into that, I want to ask you, because it's not that long ago, and I just want to ask you how you are. Well, I was doing all right. <laughs> <laughs> I feel really overwhelmed right now, because I haven't spoken about it. Yeah. And so, because it, it, it was only in July, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, and how... How are, the, how are the kids? The kids are doing really well. It was um, the hardest conversation I ever had to have with a five-year-old. Um, this is the child you had with George, mm -hmm. AJ, yes. DJ. 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 I'll, DJ. I'll call the next one AJ. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it was a shock. Well, it wasn't really, it was inevitable. How did you find out? I knew. How did you I know? knew. How did you know? I had a phone call. To... I had a phone call on the Saturday, the 6th of July, and I was with my partner, and I got a phone call from his father's Facebook account. And I started shaking because I had a non molestation order against George, so he wasn't allowed near me or any of the children, but that was up in March. So there was four months where he could have took me to court, got his life sorted, and been able to see DJ again. And when I got this phone call, I thought, oh, it's George. So I rang home, rang Lily, told Lily to lock the door. And it kept ringing and ringing. And it said, hi, Kerry, it's Ash, George's brother. Can you call me, please? And I said to Ryan, I said, they're calling to tell me George is dead. He went, no, they're not. It, it's probably George. He's... Mm. So Saturday, he's gone on one. And I went, I'm telling you now. And then my manager rang on a Saturday. As we know, ladies, you don't get a phone call from your manager no. on a Saturday in this industry. And I answered the phone, he said, you on your own, lovely? I said, you're calling to tell me George is dead, aren't you? He went, yeah. When I you say knew. that, Kerry, why did you expect Joy, uh, George to take his life? He like didn't that? take his life. It was accidental overdose. Mm. He, George was too vain to kill himself. George had very many issues. Um, by the time I worked all these issues out, I was already madly in love with him. We had a baby on the way and... It was quite a tumultuous relationship, wasn't yeah, it, from well, the we, outset, Yeah, me and George really. known each other since we were 14. Mm. You know, I always fancied him, he always fancied me. And when the violence started, it's almost like you're being groomed. And everyone goes, why didn't you walk away? And my mum was in a violent relationship and mm. I got put in foster home while my mum went back to him and I was like, I'll never do that, you know, I'll never go through that. But the, it's like you're getting groomed. And when I got a good idea, I'd apologise to him. Well, I mean, the mere fact that he took a lot of drugs and died from drugs, you know, how did it make you feel, the fact that That's he chose drugs over, over his baby, over that his is, child? I went to the chapel arrest. I drove straight down because we were still married. And I was so angry that he left his baby girl because she's beautiful. That, uh, I read about that and that your, your initial reaction when you saw him at the Chapel of Breath was pure anger. Pure. Did that shock you at how angry you were? Everyone kept asking me how I'm feeling. I'm like, I'm just so angry. He gave me hell when I was alive and then he just left me and not left me, but he left this world, which I'm not going to lie, he's better off where he is. He was so unhappy on this earth. He had so many demons, so many issues, and we thought when DJ was born, he'd change his ways, he had chance after chance, and he was never going to change, ever going to change. But if he was an addict, he chose drugs he over did. you and the and family. That's and that's why that I'm is... so angry. It makes yeah, you I'm... feel worthless. I know you're what? not worthless, but, but it's, a yeah, it's a tough decision, and that's, that was his choice. It was the hardest decision. Now, I got loads of stuff on social media, in papers. I've got blood on my hands. I left George because of what he was doing. I didn't make him do anything that he didn't want to no, do. And choice. I will not be blamed for his death. No. Do you? Absolutely. Actually, it's, it's, I know that you are it's so sensitive and you wear your heart on your sleeve. Mm. And from speaking to you and from speaking about everything that's happened over the past few months, do you think that you feel guilty yes. about the situation? I feel guilty that DJ didn't get to see his dad for a year. Of course mm. I do. But I know every time I handed DJ over to George, I'm not going to sit here, slag my baby girl's daddy off. I'm not doing that. I'm telling you my truth. I'd hand DJ over to her dad and I would fear I wasn't going to get her back. Yeah. George was spitting my face, which I thought, well, I'm not getting a good idea, so that's OK. 
And then DJ started to spit in my face. And I know I was doing the best thing for You're DJ. Her. And I will stand by that decision. Mm. But of course I feel guilt. Uh, but okay, so Kerry, I sorry. A question on that point, about the, it's well documented that you felt that you were physically and mentally abused by him. Yeah. Was that your biggest fear for your child and your other children? Yeah, on my own. I know if I had to stay with George, I'd be dead. I know it 100%. Or DJ would, mm. and I'm going to stand by that to the day I die. If he could have changed his life, it, you know, it was never going to happen. Mm. And at the end of the day, like any decent mother or any decent father, you would not allow your child to be around somebody who is abusing drugs. Now, Colleen, you've mm. been there with me when mm. I was in my dark days yeah. doing drugs. If I didn't sort myself out, I wouldn't have my children and I wouldn't blame anybody mm. for taking my children off me. And you did choose your children. I, and I over. chose my children oh. and I, I sought myself out. So when I got but, with George and saw how far gone he was with it, I was already in love and but no what one was, was there to help me. I wanted to help him. Yeah. So, so what was that moment where you knew I need to leave? I was actually at my friend's dad's funeral, Danielle Brown. And George was with me there and... I just, I, I'm, I'm really worked a lot on myself, as you know. Mm. And I just thought, how do I want my life to end? And I had this fear in my life, it's been my funeral next. And I remember going up to Danielle saying, I, I don't love George anymore. It was probably the wrong time, you know, but we're best friends. I was like, I don't love him. How do I get out of this? And I really fancied him. I'd wake up in the morning and go, whoa, you're really fit. I really fancy him, you know? And then the next thing, I was supposed to be doing the civilian Big Brother, three mm. celebrities going in. And he said, you leave those kids with me, watch what happens. He came in my face, I'm too good, get a proper job. And I just saw pure ugliness. And from that moment on, I had, you know, I was blaming me. I thought, this is what I deserve to be in. You hang around with people who are bad for you, you start to become that bad person. Mm. And you start to believe this is your self-worth. And I kind of thought, I'm better than this. I'm better than this for my children. And my Molly actually, I know she was looking at me as a weak person. And she looked at me one day and I thought, I never want to see that look off her again. Mm. But you said that Molly was a massive part in you being able to cope with the 100%. relationship and come away from the relationship. 100%. When George died, Molly did not leave my side. She didn't leave my side. Now, her and George had a very first a child relationship. Um, it wasn't always a nice one. I miss him. I'm so, so, so angry. Yeah. I'm angry. Mm. Well, what's getting you through now, Kerry? Obviously, you've been through an awful lot yourself, as you've said. Uh, you've been through an awful lot this particular year. What, what's getting you through these days? You know what, Glory? With me, I think I've been through so much. It's just like another day in my life now. My children. I think having Ryan by my side as well, who was... He's so supportive in, in, you know, if I'm down or feeling sad, he's like, you should, I'm sorry, you have to feel like that. I've never had anyone oh, say yeah. to me, I'm sorry you're going through this. I'm sorry that somebody made you feel like that. You know, you deserve better. So that's been a, a massive help. I go to church. I was going to say, yes, your yeah. life <laughs> has been a bit of a roller coaster, and right now you've been clean for a long Ten time. Ten years, yeah. Ten years, which I really applaud. <laughs> you're not married. Well, and normally, you're not <laughs> I've been with Ryan for a very long time, and normally by this stage, I'm engaged, pregnant, married, and divorced. <laughs> <laughs> so it's been over a year, and I'm oh, doing all right. It's a real it's thing. He's good. actually got a job this one, you know. Can you believe it? He gets up because working because. You're also saying that you go to church a lot. Yeah. Have you actually turned to God in that sense to get you I, by? I've always been a very spiritual person anyway. I definitely believe in a higher power. I believe in God. I believe in Jesus. JC is amazing. And the Bible, I read The Secret, and then I read The Secret, and then I read The Bible, and everything that's in The Secret has come from The Bible. I'm not going to go around and push religion down people's throat. I go to Hillsong. It's great. I absolutely love it. It's like going to a Tony Robbins seminar. You know, it's so uplifting. And mm. the way they put... I walk out of church every Sunday and I come home and Ryan knows I'm in a great mood. And I, I, it feels good. It's really empowering and I feel great for it. Well, do you know what, Kerry? You have been through such a lot. In the short time <laughs> I've known you, you've worn me out. <laughs> <laughs> Holly, you know what? It's your <laughs> time. We've known each other a long have. time. We have. But but do you know what? You're, you're, you're back. You've bounced back again. You look fantastic. It's so lovely to see you with somebody that seems so lovely. Don't He's... let us down. I'm coming up again. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't um... talk, Ryan. He's very quiet and shy. We're complete opposites. <laughs> <laughs> I can't get a word in, that's yeah. right, <laughs> Anyway, as usual, it's been fantastic oh, thank you to for see you. Well done. Thank you for having me, Chef. Terry Katona, everyone. <laughs> now, if...
you or someone you know has been affected by anything we've been talking about, you can find helplines on our website.